Hi, and welcome to Soul Church. Our prayer is that this service encourages you wherever you may be in life. Drop us any questions or comments you may have below. We've been hearing so many amazing stories about what God is doing in people's lives, and we'd love to hear yours. Take a second to send your story to stories at soulchurch.com. Thanks again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the service. God bless. Come on, are you ready to lift your voice through tonight? Let's sing. Cause you are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you.
Well, welcome to church. If this is your first time here, a big welcome. My name's John, and my wife is Chantal, and we lead Soul Church. So grateful that you take some time out to be here on this summer evening in August. And look at the place, packed out. Church is alive in the city. Church is moving forward. Tonight, we're going to be singing some of the classic songs over the last 20 years, maybe a little bit further than that. We'll see what happens. But hey, we think it's good. It's good to celebrate generational worship. And I'm going to, if you're part of the Soul Track, you guys, you're going to head out now to Soul Track across the way. And then you're going to come back in towards the end of the service. So have fun, guys. Hey. Let's sing that bit again, Oh What a Glorious Day. Now, you can't sing Oh Happy Day like this. Oh, happy day. Don't sing it like that. Sing it with a little bit of energy. Come on. Come on, let's sing it with a smile. Come on, let's remember the day that Jesus saved you. Hallelujah. Happy day, happy day. You wash my sin away. Oh, happy day. maker face to face. Do you ever just imagine the glorious day? No more sickness, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more pain. On that day, we'll be singing an anthem, lifting high the name of Jesus. Come on, why don't we Just worship his name. He is worthy to be praised and worthy of honor and glory. We fix our eyes on you today, Lord. We worship you, God. Come on, you know this. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. I worship his holy. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your soul.
there's a lot of people right now and they're desperate for God to move. People are desperate and I've got needs in my hands. Some of their relationships broken down with their, with their spouse. Another one, the relationship's broken down with their family. Someone else, their partner's run off with someone else. Someone needs a miracle in their finances, in situations, conditions in people's bodies. No, people are desperate. We live in desperate times, don't we? But here's the deal. God is here. God is with us. Every situation, every moment, every circumstance, God is there. And maybe you are desperate tonight for God to move. Whatever is out of your control is in God's control. It's in His hands. And maybe it's a financial need. Maybe it's a, a health situation. There's needs behind me that are going to come up on the screen. People who've emailed in this week, right now we're going to cry out to God. We're going to cry out to God. You know when you're desperate, you don't just you know, utter quietly. You actually cry out to God. Now, if you've got a situation, I'm not talking about shrieking out, but I'm talking about a, heart, a cry from the heart. That you're saying, God, I cannot do this week. I cannot do tomorrow. I cannot do work tomorrow without you. I need you to move in my finances, <clears throat> in my relationship. God, I need you to prove yourself real. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hand all over this room. You're saying, God, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you to move in my family, in my marriage. I'm desperate for you to move with my children. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I want to get involved right now. Come on, you get involved. You begin to cry out from your heart. Cry out from your heart. Thank you, Lord. May there be a heart's cry tonight from Mason Road. A heart's cry. A heart's cry. Come on. Let your heart cry to God. Come on, let's sing this over every one of these situations. we lift up every need, every circumstance, every request to you. And Father, we stand in the gap right now. I hold these requests in my hand. I stand there on behalf of my brothers and sisters who are struggling in need, Father God, who are desperate for you to move. We pray right now, we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would intervene. Intervene right now, Holy Spirit. We pray that sickness would go right now in Jesus' name would go in Jesus' name. I really feel right now God wants to heal some people right now in this service. You're sick right now. Just lift up your hand. God wants to heal you. There's a presence of God here tonight that's moving. You're sick right now. God is going to heal you in Jesus' name. Right now, I want you to, to raise your level of expectation. God is going to heal people with, with mental health challenges tonight. God's going to bring freedom in that area of your life. God is going to heal arthritis here tonight. I believe in the power of Jesus' name. Come on, right now, let's believe it. Right now, I'm going to speak right now into every health situation. Father, right now, I speak the power of the name of Jesus into every sick body, into every sick mind right now. And I declare freedom, Father, freedom into bodies, into minds, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank God. Come on, let's praise it. Hallelujah. What a great atmosphere in church. In church. I've read so much negativity about church this week in the press. And I think, oh, why don't they just come and visit us? Let them see that church is, isn't dead, it's alive. Anyway, that's another day. Someone's praising God for cancer that's been gone from their body. Praise God. There we go. Fantastic. Someone is praising God, saying Kids Camp was such a great success. I think we had 100, how many do we have? 130 kids here on 
Thursday and Friday, and all of our amazing team. Well done. And someone else has passed their driving test. Watch out. I praise God that in less than six months, I've got two new job offers. Well, there you go. You'll have to choose now, won't you? Now you got a new prayer request. Which one do I take? Someone's saying, got great A-level results. Hey, well done to all of our A-level students. Amazing. I will say this, whatever result you got, whatever result you got, God's plan is bigger than A-levels for your life. And, you know, I only encourage you to study hard and go to uni and get as much education as you can. But let me tell you, your life is never defined by a piece of paper. Your life is defined by what God says about you. And so well done to everyone who studied hard. Sports report. Sports report. There we go. They wrote us off last week. We had a little glitch last week. Anyway, we're back this week. And so the canaries are soaring. And uh, you're welcome to attend this church. If you support another club, just right at the back, okay? And uh, we like the yellows down the front, but no. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. I think God is doing something in the city all around. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, we are a really friendly church, which means you can either sit down and be friendly with yourself, okay? Or you can turn around and say hi to someone and be friendly with them, okay? So wherever you are, you'll be friendly. Has everyone got a seat or do we need to put more seats out? There we go. We've run out of seats in the middle of August. Why don't they write about that, hey? Fantastic. All right. We want to say a special welcome. If you are here for the first time, you're visiting, you're on holiday, just checking us out. We want to give you a special welcome and our online guests as well. Just lift up your hand if you are in the room and you're here for the first time. We've got a gift for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Great to have you here. Straight after the service, straight after the service, on my left, your right, you'll see a lounge as you head out the main doors. It says Connect Lounge. Please head into the Connect Lounge. Go and see, meet one of the team. We'd love to connect with you. And uh, there's some fresh tea, some coffee, and some cakes and biscuits in there. So we really would love to host you. And um, yeah. Well, are you enjoying Classic Night? I'm trying to work out, are you here for the classics or the chips? One will make you spiritually fat, and the other one will make you happy. There we go. Hey, would you, uh, would you say a huge thank you to all of our dream team who serve us all across the church? We really do appreciate you. We value you. Thank you for your contribution. Over on my left, your right, is a double door, and we have a family room there, so if you have any children, babies, one or under, you can take them through there if they get a little bit um, comfortable or restless during the service, and we have a live broadcast in there, so feel free to use that facility. All right, now we have the Hillsong Conference 2020 draw, okay, so... This is come on, up you come, Danny. You can be the... Uh, there we go. Come on, Come on, Chantel. Oh, this this is intense, John. All right, just shh, we'll do a drum roll in a sec. So you have to be in the room to win it. In okay? the room, in it so, to win it. 
You can be anywhere in the building, okay? If you have signed up, okay, for Hillsong Conference 2020, your name will be in this little pot. Okay, we'll give them a good mix up. Good okay. Mix. There we go. Okay. But there's only one thing, all right? You've got to get on stage within 30 seconds. That's, babe, I think that's generous. I think it's very, no, no, I think 30 seconds. Maybe. No, we have, some, we have some elder people in the church. That's true. And we I'm can't sorry. ask them to do very sorry. that, okay? Very sorry. All right, I want to be fair. Okay, so, so what we're going to do, we're going to draw out. Chantal and I are going to look at it, make sure there's been no tampering. Because there's been a lot of tampering in the past, okay? And we do not allow our sit staff mix, mix, to put mix. their names in, okay? Sometimes staff find themselves in the uh, fishbowl. Alan Cooper, Alan. okay? And, uh, Alan, Alan. Alan. All right, so Chantel. Like a, like a Caesar salad. Here we go. Just tossing it. Roll those drums. Brother Barry. Brother Barry. <laughs> it's a false one. They put a false, false one alarm. in. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Brother Barry went back in Brother the bowl. Brother Barry went back in the bowl. You ready? Nothing personal. All right. All right. Are they in the room? Julie Mann. Man. One, two, two, three. Give us a wave if your name's Julie. Five, six, seven. Julie is not here. Eight, nine, ten. Julie. Eleven. Six, 15, We've lost Julie. Fourteen. Thirteen. John, we lost Julie. Julie ain't coming. You were close, Julie. You were Sorry, really Julie. close, Julie. Sorry, Julie. Bye, Julie. Bye, Julie. All oh, right. Oh, Lord. That's two out. It's kind of intense, actually. It is a bit intense. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is very dear to my heart. Okay. This. He is a great young man. His name is... Josh Peck. Josh Peck. There we go. Oh, 30 seconds. Five, oh. four, three, three. Oh. Hey. Oh. There we go. There we go. By the way, he's not on staff. He's not on staff, just in case you were getting all offended. Well, how do you feel? Over the moon. How many of your friends do you reckon will squeeze in that room next year? I reckon it's 10. 10? Wow, do you want us to draw 10 out? <laughs> okay. All right, well done, mate. You are going to be standing the Intercontinental, and uh, they've got Kellogg's Corn Flakes for breakfast, and you're going to have a great, great time. Haribo mix the lot. There well we done, go. Go on, give Josh a big Come hand. Come on, give it up for Josh. There we go. That's impressive. Okay, we're going to receive our giving now and have invited Joseph uh, Zimmerman to come up and share with us around our giving. Will you give him a hand as he jumps up? Hey, Soul Church, how you doing tonight? Oh, good. It is hot, it is sweaty, and I'm ready for some chips. I don't know about you. On or under your seats, you'll find a giving envelope, and as I... As I share for another minute or so, you can begin to fill that out if you're one of our regular givers. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Malachi 3, verse 10. It says this, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I love this verse because in this verse is a promise. And I know I'm not the, the wisest or the most intelligent person in the room, but I do know that every time that I've tested God with my money, every time that I've trusted Him, every time that I've taken Him at His word, He's come through time and time again. And I can promise you that when you trust God with your finances, when you put Him first in your giving, when you take Him at His word, that He will always fulfill His promise to you. I love that 
all throughout this book, there are promises that God is so faithful to fulfill. So as you, as you prepare your giving, there's lots of different ways that you can give tonight. There's a few different ways behind me on the screen, but let's pray. But more importantly, let's believe that God, that as we put him to the test, that as we trust him, that he'll be faithful to bless you, that he'll be faithful to open up the floodgates of heaven and that he will bless you time and time again. So let's pray today. Dear Father, I thank you that you can be taken at your word. I thank you that as we put you to the test, as we trust you with our giving, Father God, I thank you that you see every need, that you take everything into account, Father, and that you bless us and that you open up those floodgates. Father, I pray for this church that as we, Father God, as we enact our generosity, Father God, that you would bless our lives in so many different ways, more than we could possibly think or imagine. In your name I pray, amen. Thanks, guys. Joseph, thank you. Well done, and thank you for everyone's contributions tonight. And if you're watching online, you can give online by going to soulchurch.com as well, forward slash giving, and you can make your contribution online this evening too. All right, well, as we receive that giving, just want to share three things that you need to know this week. We're doing things a little bit different tonight because we want to create some time for extra worship and for baptisms. Who's excited for the baptisms tonight? It's going to be amazing. And so next Sunday evening is the last Sunday of August. And so we want you to spend that time. It's a public holiday weekend. We want you to spend time with your families and friends. Okay, so there'll be no service on the last Sunday in August, which is next weekend. So stay at home, have a barbecue, have some time with your family. And then we will be back strong the following Sunday. So there'll be morning services, 8.30, 10 and 12. So if you've never checked out one of our morning services, come out next Sunday morning. It's going to be a great day in church. And uh, Girls Night Out, the 10th of September. Chantel, tell us what's happening. Oh, you do not want to miss out on this. Hey, you know how we normally go to different venues in the city? Well, we're going to be in one venue. Isn't that so good? And I think we might be having a dance party. So girls, get your dancing shoes on. We're going to have it at Bill's Restaurant in the city. And um, if you want more information, go to the information desk, sign up, register, because we want to make sure we gather as many girlfriends as possible, because we want to make sure that we're doing life together, loving on each other, and dancing the night away. Okay, so sign up on the 10th of September and then on the Thursday, the 12th of September, it is Wonder Auditions. We're looking forward to the wonder at the end of the year. And so, hey, if you've auditioned already or you want to audition, come out that night, seven o'clock. Our team would love to hear from you. If you can sing, dance, wave a flag, come and be part of it. Fantastic. All right, let's jump back on our feet. We're going to head back into some worship and then I'm going to come up and just share a couple of thoughts of us before we head into baptisms.
It's all. 
coming back. I'm coming back.
Amen. An awesome God. I want us to sing that again with no music. I just want to hit, sing it with the voices. Come on, let's proclaim this over Norwich. Why don't you proclaim that God is awesome over your marriage? God is awesome over your business. God is awesome over anything that's concerning you. Come on, let's sing it. Come on, Chantal. He's an awesome God. He raised from heaven Come on, he loves hearing your voice. Come on, let's take it up. Our God. can take your seats. We're going to just come around God's Word just for a few moments tonight. Thank you, team. Come on, let's thank the worship team. They've been rehearsing hard and some of them had to learn those songs. You guys really sing the old stuff, don't you? Crazy to think in 20 years, the songs we're singing in church, that'll be the old stuff. Today is Eternity Sunday, and we've been talking about the big question in life, what happens next? And we've been using this illustration of a rope. Some of you have seen this before, others maybe this is a new illustration. This is a a 20-meter piece of rope, okay? And I need you to use your imaginations for a second, but this 20 meter piece of rope actually goes on for eternity. So it goes on and on and on. But right at the end, or the start of the rope, um, this is a timeline of our existence. This is where we are right now. Now, I am 40 years old. I know I don't look a day over 21, but I am 40 years old. And most of us live with a 70 to 80 year perspective in life, which means I'm about halfway. Okay? Some of you are right at the start, right at the beginning. Some of you are a little bit further on. And in a few short years, all of us are going to spend eternity somewhere. Now, the reason we talk about eternity is because everyone gets to spend eternity somewhere. And we don't like talking about eternity. We, don't, we just like talking about the red stuff which is work and uni and exams and the daily challenges of life, the kids runs, the lunch boxes, that's all the red stuff. And let me tell you, most of what we teach in Soul Church is all about the red. Because Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and that you might just have, and you'd have life in abundance. And God wants you to live an abundant life here on earth. But very, very few of us give any attention to the white. Eternity. And the Bible says that whatever we do in this part, in the red part, will determine what happens for eternity. James put it like this in James chapter 4. He says, for what is your life? It is even a vapor 
that appears for a little time. He's talking about the red. The 70 to 80 years, it appears for a short time. And then it vanishes away. Now this for me, it raises three questions. Three questions, big questions. And the questions are probably the most important three questions that you can ever ask yourself in life. In fact, the answer to these three questions will actually determine where you spend eternity. These questions, I'm very aware that there are many, many hundreds of followers of Jesus Christ in here tonight. And you already know the answer to these three questions. However, these are friendly reminders so when you are in the the dinner hall at uni, when you are at college or at work, and people ask you these questions because people will ask you these questions, we actually equip you with the right answers. So the first question is this, why am I here? Why am I here? Who knows this is a big question? Has anyone ever asked themselves, what on earth am I doing here on planet earth? Now, surprisingly enough, we're going to tackle these three questions just in 10 minutes, but we're going to tackle them from a biblical perspective. Okay, not from an atheistic perspective, but a biblical perspective. And we're actually going to take the perspective that the Bible is the absolute truth. Now, a lot of people don't believe that, but I do. Now, you say, John, how can you believe in a book that was written 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 years ago? It's really easy because I've tested it. Anything in life which has been tested, it can be trusted. And so for some of you, maybe this is, uh, you're sitting here and you're exploring faith, exploring Christianity, you're exploring the meaning of life. And for some of you, you've been on this journey a long time. And for Chantelle and I, we've been, you know, Christians for the majority of our lives and we have tested God's word and it has proven true. We have tested it in our finances. We have tested it in our marriage. We have tested it raising children. And every single word in this book, it works. So that's why I'm coming at it from a Christian viewpoint and a biblical viewpoint tonight. So the big questions in life, there's three of them. Why am I here? Where am I going? And how do I get there? There's a key passage in Matthew chapter 7. It says this, come to God through the narrow gate. This is Jesus speaking, because the wide gate and the broad path is the way that leads to destruction. Nearly everyone chooses that crowded road. But the narrow gate and the difficult way leads to eternal life, so few even find it. Jesus teaches his audience that there are two gates, there are two paths, and there are two destinations in life. So let's answer our questions from this passage. The first question is, why am I here? Deep on the inside of every human is this inherent need to be loved. No one can escape it. No one can deny it. You were created to be loved. You know, to be loved, it was actually hardwired into you by God to be loved. You might think, I'm all macho, I'm all strong, I don't need to be loved. That's not true. We all need to be loved. And here's the deal. God is love. 1 John 4, 8 says, God is love. So the first three verses, the first three words of our chapter in Matthew 7, it says this, come to God. What is he saying? Come in to my love. If you're saying, I'm not sure of my value on earth, I'm not sure what my purpose is, let me tell you, your first purpose is this, to know that you are loved. God loves you. Maybe your spouse left you, maybe your kids have disconnected from you, but tonight God wants you to know he will never leave you. He will love you until your dying day. (laughs) Coming into God's love. For the second half of why we're here on earth, it doesn't stop there. You weren't created just to be loved. You were created to love others. So we're created to love and to love back. Success, you know, so many people think life is about success or fame or fortune. The problem with all those things is they do not have the ability to keep us happy long term. Why? Because I wasn't created for success. I wasn't created to be famous. I wasn't created to make a fortune. I was created to be loved. And I was created to love in return. So my my job in in this first part of my life is, is this. Is to be loved. But the second part of this is to love others. I love that line in that song we just sung. Break my heart for what breaks yours. Do you know what breaks God's heart? 
It's people who do not know they're loved. Do you know there's people who are taking their own lives all over our country right now, like record numbers, record suicide rates, and it's simply this. They don't know they're loved. They don't know they're loved. And our job as followers of Jesus Christ is to love people, to let them know that they're loved. Well, let me tell you, loving people love people. But unless you know that you are loved, and some of you are sitting there tonight saying, how, how could God love me? If you don't know my past, you don't know the choices I made, you don't know the things and mistakes I've made. It's not about what you've done wrong, friend. It's about what Jesus did right for you on the cross of Calvary. And tonight, no matter what's happened in your past, no matter what's happened in your life, you are loved of God. So why am I here? You're here to be loved, and you're here to love others. Second question, where am I going? Maybe you never think about this because you're so caught up with the red. If you're anything like me, I get very caught up. I'm already thinking about tomorrow and what the things I've got to do. But where, where I'm going is determined by the choices that I make when I'm living. Psalm 119, 19 says this, I am a stranger and a temporary resident. Earth is not our permanent residence. There are two paths and there are two residents. One's Bible says is a wide path that leads to destruction. The other is a narrow and a difficult path which leads to eternal life. Despite maybe popular opinion these days, there is no halfway house when it comes to your future. A lot of Christians and a lot of people believe all the really, really bad people will go here to hell and all the really, really good people will go over here. And people like me will kind of go to a halfway middle house. Because we feel like we're not quite bad enough for hell and we're not quite good enough for heaven. But that doesn't work like that. The Bible doesn't talk about three gates and three paths and three destinations. It talks about two paths, two gates, and two destinations. This is not politically correct to say anymore. Okay, so I need everyone to get, off, get, get out their phone and record this. There is only one way to God. There is not two ways, there is not three ways, there is not four ways, there is not five ways. The Bible says this, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one, you cannot get to God except through the narrow gate and the lonely path which leads to eternal life. It's a narrow and difficult way that leads to heaven. It's a broad way that leads to hell. And as pastors and believers, followers of Jesus, we've got to choose, we've got to choose truth over trendy. A lot of people don't want to hear about the truth anymore. They want to push the truth out and just teach trendy stuff. And I'm all about teaching the red. I want to give you every principle you can to have a better life, a better marriage, a better business. But here's the deal. The principles I give to your business will not count in eternity. Will not count for eternity. And there are two destinations. The first destination is hell. Are you glad you came to church tonight? <laughs> hell is somewhere we don't have too many details about. But the ones we do have, they're not good. Hell is where God is not. Here's the deal. Hell was not built for us. Hell was built for the enemy. And hell is eternal separation from God. Here's the good news. There are two paths, and the other path leads to eternal life, heaven. The biggest question I get asked as a pastor is this, what's heaven going to be like? I tell you what, you should listen, because we're all going to spend eternity there if you follow Jesus. Now, there's no trip advisor views on heaven, reviews on heaven. I wish there was, because I'd be, I'd be reading up. All we have is John's revelation. In Revelation 21, verse 4, this is a glimpse of eternity. Hey, this is really good. It says, God's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. This is heaven. There will be no more death. There will be no sorrow, no crying. There will be no more pain. There will be no more former things because they have passed away. And Jesus said, I will make all things new. You know, often the times we think about death, we think about eternity, is in a negative manner. I actually don't think we need to live in fear about eternity. I actually think we can live in excitement. You know, death can be a real issue for people. If we focus on this little part, if we think that this is our life and 
you know, let me tell you, you're going to live a very negative existence, especially when you get older. Because as you get older and you see this slipping away, life gets harder. But if you live with an eternal perspective, that this is just a small part of my life, and I'm going to live in eternity with Jesus Christ, let me tell you, you can live with excitement, not fear for what lies ahead. So what is heaven about? What is heaven all about? I'm going to give you just three things what heaven's about. Number one is this. Heaven is a holy place. Heaven is a holy place. Revelation 21. John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down of heaven. It calls it a holy city. Now, what does that word holy mean? It's a spiritual word. It's a big word. I'll tell you what holy means. Holy means something that's been sanctified. And so heaven is holy because of what has been sanctified, what has been barred from it. Let me tell you what has been barred from heaven. Sickness, sorrow, pain, death, darkness, funerals, cemeteries, hospitals, orphanages, prisons, planning permissions. Noise complaints for unhappy neighbors. By the way, it's going to be noisy in heaven. Heaven's going to be, there'll be billions of people in heaven. Billions of people. It won't just be like a little quiet, you won't be just living by a lake. I'll be there with my kids. No politics. No Brexit. None of the challenges that we're facing on earth will be in heaven because heaven is holy. Heaven is sanctified. Heaven is set apart. Heaven is all things made new. What else is heaven? Heaven is the great reunion. Has anybody been disconnected from family members? I remember when I lived in Australia for two years and I came home. What a great reunion. What a, what a great roast dinner it was that mum cooked up on the, on, the, on, the opening, on the opening night home. I've been living on barbecues for two years and came home and had a proper dinner. Great reunion. You know, I will just say this. Scripture gives absolutely no indication that there will be memory loss in heaven causing us not to recognize friends and family. You will be reunited with people you love and people you care about. Someone said to Billy Graham, will my dog be in heaven? Good question. He said, if your dog matters to you, it matters to God. I thought that was a brilliant answer. God cares about what you care about. God loves what you love. God loves everything. In fact, (coughs) heaven's going to be a lot more natural than you think. It's going to be a perfect earth without the problems. The A-17 is going to have a dual carriageway all the way to Newark. The new Newark. There'll be no speed cameras. Where's Chantel? Okay. Heaven is a great reunion. What else do we know about heaven? Is this. Heaven has room for more. Heaven has room for more. My father's house has many rooms. He says, I have not told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. It's personal. God wants you, your family, your colleagues. He wants your children in heaven. So my most important job here on earth, I get asked all the time, why are you so driven in what you do? It's really simple. I want to get as many of those light bulbs lit up with people from our city who are going to a lost eternity, who are going to find Jesus for eternity. So my most important job here on earth is to let people know the good news about Jesus, to save people. I can't save people, but I can give them the good news which saves them. I was about 10 years old, about 15 years ago, and I was, we were on the back of the car, my sister and I, and we were traveling to Oldborough in Suffolk. My dad was driving, and we were sleeping on the back. It was the days where you just didn't have seat belts, you just had pillows. Remember those? You just, the good old days. We were sleeping, and literally heard a bang, a big bang, and we, we jumped up, and in front of us, there was a big lorry that had shed its load of logs, and some logs had obviously spilled over onto the car that was coming the other way, and there was a person in that car, and dad said, stay here, I'm going to run, and he ran to this car, and there was a gentleman in the front seat, and He was in a bad way. He was in a poorly state. He didn't have long to live. And it's not like we live now where we just pick up our mobile phones and call call 999. Let me tell you, back in the days, you'd run for help. 
the dad realized that, that, that he didn't have time to run for help for this man. He had a few minutes to spend with him. And he asked him, do you know Jesus is your personal savior? He realized that he was living in the final, the final few seconds, few minutes of his red. And he was determined that he was going to spend eternity with Jesus. And he took his hand and he prayed a prayer with him. And he confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And this man died in my dad's arms. And here's the deal. He crossed over into eternal life with Jesus. We never know the time. We never know the date. We never know when it's going to happen. All we need to do is we need to be ready for people. If you ever get the opportunity to visit people and they're on their last legs, ask them, don't ask them what they want for their last meal. You ask them whether they're going to be spending eternity with Jesus. God is going to put you in positions. You have the opportunity to share the love of Jesus. You were created to be loved and you were created to love. So the song comes up on the keys. Our final question is this, how do I get there? How do I get there? Well, it's simple. You choose. You choose. People say to me all the time, how could a loving father send people to a lost eternity? He doesn't send us there. We choose. God is not a dictator. God has given us one of the greatest gifts to humanity that he could ever give, and that is the freedom of choice. If you've ever met anyone who's lived under a dictatorship, they live miserable, horrible existence. But Jesus, he died so that we could have freedom. And so Jesus said, he said, now I want you to choose. You can choose to live the broad life and choose to live life your own way and try and navigate it through on your own and hope for the best, or you can choose me. You see, we don't default to heaven. We don't default to heaven. There's a warped theology that's crept into the church. It's called universalism. And it says that everyone, regardless of their belief, regardless of their behaviors, their conducts, will just end up in heaven. Then why did Jesus die? Why did Jesus take the punishment for my sin? No, Jesus died so that we could choose. And we can choose, and we get to choose the two paths. We get to choose eternity with Jesus, the narrow, the challenging way. Let me tell you, it's getting more and more challenging for Christians. And it's not going to stop, by the way. It's not going to stop. The pressure on us. But we've got to stick to the truth of what God's Word says. On some of the issues in society right now, we've got to stick to what God's Word says. So this isn't, that's why Jesus said it will be difficult. It will be difficult. It's so much easier going out on the Broadway where the, the Bible says it's busy on the Broadway because no one wants to take the tough route. And the Broadway, it starts broad. It's a wide gate, but here's the deal. As you go through life, it gets narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower and people end up living lonely lives. Serving Jesus, when you go through the narrow gate, what happens? You go through the narrow gate, and as you begin to serve Jesus year after year, what happens is life actually gets wider and wider and wider and wider. It's actually the very opposite. It's a narrow gate, but it's a broad life. Serving Jesus, and it leads to eternity with Him. So the question is, how do we get there? Do we have to work for it? Do we have to earn it? No, the Bible says, by grace, you've been saved. By grace. By grace, you've been saved. You can't, you might say, well, John, I've been a really good person. You know, I pay my bills. I visit my auntie who's, who, who, who's in hospital. Well done. Good on you. But that won't save you. It's not good works that get you to heaven. It's God's grace. I'm all about good works. But it's God's grace that saves us. And all we have to do is receive that grace. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So I want everyone to close their eyes across this room. This is a private moment. I'm going to ask you a really difficult, challenging question. But I want you to think. I want you to ignore the red. I want you to ignore what's happening right now in your life. I want you to think about eternity. And the question is this. 
Where will you be one minute after you leave this earth? One minute. You get to choose. Good news is maybe you feel like your life is on the wrong path right now. You can switch paths. I don't know your background. I don't know whether you grew up in church. I don't know if you're watching online right now. I don't know if you're sitting in your office at home. But God does. And today you get to choose. I want to give you an opportunity to choose God's love. Today you are loved. You are loved of God. No matter what's happened in your past, you are loved. Receive His love. You get to consider your eternal options. And then you get to choose your path. No one looking around. I'm going to count to three. But if you say, John, that's me tonight. I want to make a decision right now in this moment to choose Jesus. Maybe you feel like you're living on the wrong path, but tonight you can choose the right path. You can have that assurance in your heart that when you leave this earth, you'll spend eternity with Him in heaven. When I get to three, all I want you to do is just signal to me. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you forward. All I want you to do is just slip up your hand. Say, that's me, John. Pray for me. One, God loves you. Two, would you have the courage right now to respond to him. Three, just slip up your hand nice and high so I can see it. Let me pray for you. God bless 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 you. Beautiful. Anyone else? Say that to me. Lift it up nice and high. God bless you. Right at the back. God bless you. Choose Jesus tonight. You can put your hands down. I'm not here to embarrass people, but I really believe there's a whole lot more people. You're sitting on the fence. You're saying, hey, when I get to 30, 40, 50, 60, I'll, I'll work that out. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. We are not promised another day on earth. All we are promised is the present, the moment, the now. And some of you, your, your heart's ticking quicker. Because God is speaking to you. Your, your heart's beating. It's because God wants, to, God wants to draw close to you right now. You're saying, John, that's me. God bless you. Come on, hands going up again. Just slip it up nice and high. God bless you. God bless you. Beautiful. Anyone else? Say that to me tonight. Fantastic. All right. Many, many hands went up. Let's stand to our feet. You've, you've listened so well. I know it's been a bit sticky in the room, but it's worth it. Let me tell you, it's worth getting a bit hot and sticky in the red to spend eternity with Jesus. You'll never regret the moment you invited Jesus to be your Savior. I want us just to close our eyes. We're going to say this prayer. Maybe you didn't lift up your hand, but you felt something was changing in your heart. You felt that you, you were drawing close to God in this moment. And so I want you to pray this prayer. In fact, we're all going to say it together. It goes like this. Dear Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he loves me. Thank you that he died on the cross for me. Right now, I switch paths. I choose the narrow gate. I choose the path which leads to eternity with you. I'm sorry for my sin, living life my own way. But today is a turning point. I am loved by God, and I will love others in return. I choose heaven. Amen. Amen. Come on, would you give a cheer to everyone who's made that decision tonight? If you made that, if you said that prayer, you lifted up your hands, we're going to do some baptisms in a minute. And maybe you want to jump in on this as well. So don't, don't just leave. But straight afterwards in the, in the, in the corner by the, the, the Connect Lounge, there's some people. They're going to be holding some Bibles up. They look like these. We want to give you a Bible. Please do not leave here if you made that decision. Even if you didn't lift up your hand, we want to give you this Bible. This is the next step in becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. Okay, and so take that and keep coming back to church. We've got three services next Sunday, 8, 30, 10, and 12. We'd love to hear to see you. This really is a great step forward. But one more time, would you thank everyone who said that <laughs> prayer tonight? We've seen over 25 decisions for Jesus today. How can you not clap that? I said we've seen over 25 decisions for Jesus.
Would you just take your seats for a second? We're going to, I know we've gone over time, but it's worth it. We're going to have baptisms right now. And uh, baptisms is a significant step in the individual's life of a, of a believer. And so um, this moment symbolizes leaving the old way behind, walking into a brand new life. And I'm proud of everyone. Who's proud of these guys who are making decisions to be baptized? If, you, if you're being baptized tonight, can I just say this? Baptism is not about your goodness. It's about God's grace. The amount of people that told me I'm not good enough to be baptized, let me tell you, that's why it's dirty water. Because it's not about getting clean before you get baptized. We are unclean and we are clean by God's grace. We leave our old life behind. We let go of the past and we step into a brand new life as we leave the water. And so I want to encourage you that baptism is a public declaration of a new association with Jesus. Now, just before... Just before our guys, I'm going to ask them to, if you're being baptized, you guys can begin to head out or head begin to line up. But I just want to talk to some people here tonight. And you have never been baptized before. You've never been baptized. You've never been fully immersed in water. Maybe you were christened as a young baby and that was fantastic. But you've never, as an adult, made a decision to be baptized. I want to encourage you tonight that you still have an opportunity. You say, well, I need to pray about it. We don't need to pray about what God's instructed. Okay, if you've never been baptized, you've got an opportunity, a spur of the moment, to be baptized tonight. I'm not dressed for it. Let me tell you, we've got t-shirts and towels, okay? We've got fresh laundry, okay? So if you want to be baptized tonight, you don't have, you say, well, there's nowhere to change. We've got male and female changing rooms tonight. You say, well, I don't have a towel. Well, we've got towels. The water is going to be dirty. Well... Jesus got baptized in the Jordan where they washed animals. Okay, so I'm just trying to help you eliminate any excuses that you're coming up with for not being baptized tonight. I want my family here. We've got professional photographers tonight on stand who will take photos. You can share them with your family. So is there anyone tonight you say, I've never been baptized. Maybe you made a decision to follow Jesus tonight. You said, I want to go through the next step of beginning a Christian. Just lift up your hand. All you have to do, good on you, good on you. Well done. So if you head out, head over to my left, your right. You head over there. Our team will be waiting. We'll make sure that we get you the right stuff. Come on. If you've never been baptized, don't put it off. Do it tonight. The right time to do the right thing is right now. I love it. Isn't it awesome? I love baptism at nights. And so I'm going to pray. And we have a, members of our pastoral care team who are going to be praying for the individuals as they come out of the water, praying a prayer of new life and God's wisdom and protection over them. And uh, you can, we're going to invite all the children. They're going to come in and they're going to sit around the, the baptismal tank. Why don't we just sing a song of worship? And you guys can stand to your feet. And then the baptisms will come up on the screen as well. So you can, you can watch them. You've still got time. If you want to be baptized tonight, go and join the queue. Our team will get you ready. And uh, then we're going to have a celebration. Fantastic.
o'clock tonight, we have David Field and Alan Cooper who are going to be baptizing. And I think we've got 22, 23 people who are going to be going through the waters of baptism and making a public declaration of their faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so why don't we put our hands together first for Kaylee Carey. of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we've got a very special young man. Now, I'm going to ask you not to clap because uh, Rome's got a few um, learning disabilities and he's just, he, he, he doesn't need any clapping, okay? And this is a really brave act for Rome and Carrie. And so we're just going to let him get in and then. Well done, buddy. Well done, Roman. Roman, what does Jesus mean to you? Calming. So, Roman, on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done. Bless him. Father, we thank you for Roman's obedience to you, Father. We thank you at a young age, Father, for taking that brave step, Father. We thank you that he'll remember this day for the rest of his life. Bless him, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give him a, a quiet clap. Fantastic. All right, next up we have Frederick Myers. Come on, let's give Fred a cheer. Frederick, what does Jesus mean to you? He's my friend, my saviour, and my guide. Amazing. Frederick, by the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Fred. Next up, we have Lewis Mortimer. Yeah. So, Lewis, what does Jesus mean to you? Love from on high. Praise the Lord. Lewis, on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Lewis. Next being baptized is Andy McGregor. Come on, let's give it up for Andy.
Andy, what does Jesus mean to you? Redemption and the chance of eternal life. Amen. So Andy, by the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next, we've got Sophia Fortu. Come on, let's give it up for Sophia. She's very brave. Sophia, what does Jesus mean to you? Love. Love. That's fantastic. So, Sophia, on your confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Well done, Sophia. Well done, darling. Next, we've got Andrew Philpot. Come on, let's give it up for Andrew. Well done, Andy. Andrew, what does Jesus mean to you? Uh, love and forgiveness. Amen. So, Andrew, by the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good job, Andrew. Well done, Andrew. Next being baptized is Emily Smith. Come on, let's give it up for Emily. So, Emily, what does the Lord Jesus mean to you? He is my way of life and my savior. Fantastic. So on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, Emily, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Emily. Next, we've got Etu Mukombela. Come on, Etu. Etu, what does Jesus mean to you? Um, love and kindness. Amen. So, Etu, it, by the words of your confession in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, it too. And next we've got Gaston Makumbala. Gaston, what does Jesus mean to you? Uh, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Amen. So Gaston, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Gaston. Well, well done, Gaston. Next, we've got Brixter Jimenez. Brixter, what does Jesus mean to you? My Savior, my Father, and I'll always follow him. Amen. So, Brixter, come on. By the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next to be baptized is JJ Howden. Come on, JJ. <laughs> JJ, what does Jesus mean to you? My father and my healer. Brilliant. So JJ, on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, JJ. Next, we've got Melissa Shoko. Come on, Melissa. So, Melissa, what does Jesus mean to you? He's my savior, savior, and my true inspiration. Amen. So, Melissa, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Melissa. Next, we've got Esube Mukumbela. Come on, let's give it up for us, Sue. Amazing. Sube, what does Jesus mean to you? Uh, redemption and a hero. Brilliant. So, Sube, on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Exos Mushin Saki. Come on, let's give it up for Exos. So, Exos, what does Jesus mean to you? My Savior and happiness. Amen. So, Exos, by the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amazing. Next up, we have Jack Orton. Come on, Jack. <laughs> Jack, what does the Lord Jesus mean to you? Family. Amen. So, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we have Beth, Beth Brown. Let's give her a hand as she gets in. So Beth, what does Jesus mean to you? Just everything. Amen. So Beth, by the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Next, we have my little niece, Anna Louise Rogers. Come on, let's give her a cheer, bless her. Anna Louise, what does Jesus mean to you? Um, he's my Lord and Savior. Amen. So, Anna Louise, on confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well done, Anna. Now we have Tom Mooney. Come on, Tommy. And getting in the, getting in the tub to baptize his son is the one and only Sam Mooney. Tom, what does Jesus mean to you? I can't imagine living life without him. So, Tom, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Now, finally tonight, our 22nd baptism is a very special one because Kelly made a decision to follow Jesus tonight, and she's getting baptized. So, come on, let's give her a big welcome, Kelly Butler. Kelly, what does Jesus mean to you? A new way of life. Fantastic. So Kelly, on the confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
May the Lord bless you this week. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and fill you with His peace. Amen. Amen. We love you, church. Have a great week. See you next weekend. Thanks again for tuning in. If you said the salvation prayer today, we'd love for you to email connecttofaith at soulchurch.com so we can talk a little bit more about this incredible decision that you've just made. And if at any point in the service you felt moved to give to any of our local or global initiatives, then head to soulchurch.com and click on giving at the top of the page. We're so glad you tuned in today and we hope to see you again soon. God bless.